okay so for fifth question along with the diagram you should write the explanation of this uh, computer system components okay so we will see the first question so what can be the answer given for this particular question now okay so see here what is the question asked what is motherboard explain the different components of the motherboard so first you should write the definition of the motherboard so what is a motherboard it is a printed circuit board which is a PCB you call okay so this is a large printed circuit board having many chips ports controllers and other electronic components mounted on it okay so this is what the definition that you should give for the motherboard which is a motherboard is a large printed circuit board on which all other electronic components will be mounted and this is the main part of your computer next comes components of the motherboard which is the second part of your question okay so under the components you have processor bios cmos slots disk controller io ports and interfaces and bus first you should list out the components after listing you should explain each and every component there so what is the first component processor so what is processor it is a main component on the motherboard and this is called as the brain of the computer okay so every time you write you just underline some of the points so that it looks highlighted for the person whoever is correcting your paper because this is what the main definition of the processor see this is mounted on the uh, like what is this motherboard that is no doubt in that because what you are studying now is a components of the motherboard so that is mounted on that itself so what is this used for the functions of that this is what the main thing you should specify whenever you are giving the explanation so just say processor is a brain of a computer and it consists of ALU and CU arithmetic logic unit and control unit why ALU is used for performing arithmetic instructions or arithmetic operations if you want to perform ALU will be used similarly CU also control unit and next CPU also has set of registers which are used for temporary storage for holding the data and the instructions okay so what is what and all you can write for processor just write that this is the main component you can say and it is also called as the brain of a computer where all the processing is happening and what and all is present inside that it has ALU, CU and registers just write what they are doing there okay registers are used for storing the data and the information but that is not for permanent storage it's only the temporary storage whenever a processing is happening okay next component is BIOS what is BIOS basic input output system this is a small chip mounted on the motherboard that holds the set of instructions to load the hardware settings required to activate various devices like keyboard monitors or disk drives any external devices that you connect to the computer that should be activated whenever you on off the means uh, when you on the system you should activate that for working with that so whenever you ha have these uh, devices connected okay so for activating these devices there are some instructions required that set of instructions are holded in this BIOS chip itself so the name called as basic input output system there okay next is your CMOS this is also called as complementary metal oxide semiconductors whenever you have this abbreviated form so it's the best way or practice of writing the full like full form of this abbreviations also so what is CMOS it is a type of memory chip 
to store date, time and system setup parameters. Enough. If you write this much for CMOS, it is well enough. Next is slots. So slots on a motherboard is actually a opening okay, where you can insert the PCBs. This you can write there. A slot is an opening in the computer where you can insert a printed circuit board. Sometimes the slots are also called as expansion slot because right okay after writing the exp expansion slots you just give the reason also why do they call as expansion slot because that will enable us to expand the capabilities of a computer okay so for expanding the capabilities you will have this expansion slots used okay next comes disk controllers what the disk controllers will do it will actually uh, communicate it will enable the cpu to communicate with the disk drivers so example see here this disk controller is nothing but a circuit that enables the cpu to communicate with a hard disk floppy disk or other kind of disk drives for doing this you have the drivers used okay uh, their floppy disk driver and then hard disk driver so that both will come under disk controllers okay next one is IO ports and interfaces input output ports this can be asked as a separate question also so we have seen in the first page that we had a question on this IO ports itself the types of IO ports you should explain here no need to write in detail just a small explanation for each component you are going to give now so write what is IO port and interface this one is used to connect external devices like printers keyboards or scanners to the computer system which gets connected to the computer's motherboard this is a usage of IO ports any external device if you want to connect to the computer system you will be using IO ports and the last one is bus so bus is nothing but what how the data is carried or transferred see a bus is a collection of parallel wires that form a pathway to carry address data and control signals okay this one whenever you want to carry address data and control signals a bus is used and how the bus is formed it is formed by uh, like parallel wires okay many wires you arrange them parallelly so this will consider as a bus and each wire will carry one bit of data this we have already studied in the chapter so you can write that or else you can uh, leave for definition itself okay this is about first question what is motherboard and components of the motherboard so we will move to the next question the next question says that write a short note on the primary memory okay specifically they are asking about a primary memory so before going to explain about the primary memory just write what is meant by memory then you can go ahead with the question what is asked so a computer memory refers to the electronic storing space for instructions and data where the computer's processor so processor is what we are talking about the CPU can reach the instructions quickly okay so what do you understand by the term memory it is a storage space in the computer since a computer is an electronic device the memory is also called as a electronic or electronic storage space you in which the instructions will be stored the CPU can access this instruction or fetch these instructions for processing it whenever it is required now under the primary memory you have 
two types to discuss. The first one is random access memory and next comes read only memory. So what is meant by random access and read only we will see now. So random access memory is the main memory of the computer system. Okay, This is the main memory called as RAM and what is the size of the RAM? It varies from 16 MB, 32 MB, 64 MB to 8 GB. Till this, okay, the RAM can be varied in size. Okay, and what are the features of the RAM? You just write there. The features are expensive, means it's highly cost there. Small in size. The RAM is small for okay in size it is small. Volatile in nature. What is meant by volatile in nature? Whenever you turn off the computer, the instructions that are stored in this RAM will be erased. So see here, the data stored on it completely erased as and when the computer is switched off. So these are the features. This is the size variation of this RAM. Under this RAM also you have different types I said. You are writing a short note on the primary memory. So you should write in detail everything there. First explain what is a memory. Under the type primary memory you had two types. Just list out and take each type and then explain in detail. You explain what is RAM. Again under the RAM you had different types again. The first one is DRAM which is also called as dynamic RAM. Next one is static RAM, synchronous dynamic RAM and double data rate RAM. So these are the four types of RAMs which are under the main concept called as RAM. Okay means the classifications you can say that. Okay. So for each one you can give one line explanation or so depending on the marks you can just give an explanation and then move to the next part. So RAM is done. So next comes ROM, read only memory. Again, so just define what is ROM and then write the types of ROM solves. So ROM is a small memory which stores the boot firmware, okay, called as BIOS, okay. This is, you can add one more point here. It is non-volatile memory. Unlike RAM, what is RAM? RAM is a volatile in nature, but ROM, read only memory is a non-volatile memory. Okay, you can, this is one of the feature of that. And under the types of ROM, you have PROM, EPROM and EEPROM. So EPROM is nothing but what? Programmable ROM. Next is erasable, programmable ROM electrically erasable programmable ROM. So this is what the second question uh, okay and the answer will depend upon the marks that is been asked if it is for three marks for uh, five marks so you see the marks and then write the content accordingly okay. So next question is explain cache memory okay. So what is meant by cache memory? is the question. This is a very high speed memory placed in between the RAM and the CPU. You will have the storage unit which is called as a RAM and you will have the main CPU okay means the processor. In between these two a storage memory which is called as a cache memory will be placed. What is the use of this? You should write that it stores the data that is used more often. So what is the meaning of this? Frequently used instructions will be put in the cache memory temporarily and makes it available to the CPU at the fast rate. Okay, CPU will fetch the instructions from the RAM for processing it. This is what we have studied there. But when CPU wants to fetch the first 
search will be made in the cache memory itself because in the cache you will have the instructions that are frequently used for processing if the same instruction that the CPU is searching for that is present in a cache that will be fetched or else it will be given like the search is made in the main memory which is called as RAM there and this is used to increase the speed of processing because don't need to go to the RAM di directly so go to the cache from there itself you fetch and then process when this thing is happening the processing time is becoming uh, less so it is they are saying that to increase the speed of the processing the speed increases okay in a lesser time the instructions will be processed there during processing the CPU first checks the cache for the required data if data is not found in the cache then it looks in the RAM for the data this is what the explanation I gave for this particular sentence there okay next you should say the working of cache memory in detail till now what we saw is the definition of a cache memory now explain how does it work also so when the program is running the CPU needs the data or instructions from the RAM and stores it in the registers so in the block diagram or in like in the components we have studied that in the processor you have ALU CU and registers what is the use of register to store the instructions temporarily for getting it processed so that registers are used now when an instruction is processing or it should be processed the first data should be taken from the RAM okay from the RAM it is taken and that is stored in the registers at the same time it is also it also stores a copy of the data or instructions in the cache memory when for the first time when the instruction is fetched that instruction is stored in two places the first one is a register and a copy of that is maintained in the cache memory also for the next time if the CPU needs the same data or the instructions it finds it in the cache memory see in the first line we saw from the RAM the search is happening for the next time next cycle where the search is made in the cache no need to go for the RAM directly this helps to enhance the speed of the instructions execution by CPU again under this you have two levels level 1 cache and level 2 cache usually level 1 is present inside the processor itself so we will see this L1 cache that comes with the CPU processor so we are calling it as L1 cache this cache runs at the processor clock speed and therefore it is very fast okay L1 is fastest compared to L2 and where the L2 is placed L2 is placed between the processor and the main memory it is a much slower cache which is residing in the motherboard and delivers slower performance so RAM means L2 cache which is present on the motherboard is slower than the L1 cache now write the block diagram of that so to understand it clearly so first write the processor in the processor registers will be there and you will have a L1 cache next you will have a main memory so in between this main memory and the processor you have the L2 cache placed this is a slowest uh, memo cache memory than L1 okay and you will have the disk from where the contents will be taken okay so this is about cache memory uh, next question is uh, the different types of IO inputs and the block diagram of computer system these two we will see it in tomorrow's class thank you <music>